Hello everyone, welcome to the season premiere of the Brian Boyer Show along with A-State women's basketball coach Brian Boyer. I'm Brad Bobo. We join you with A-State sitting uh, right now midway through the conference schedule, an 8-2 and two record in league play, 13-7 and seven overall. We'll sort of tell everyone how we got there uh, along the way, Coach, but overall, uh, you know, you had a team with a lot of experience, especially in the backcourt, some questions up front, and uh, the defending champions from the Sun Belt, and uh, you know, even with those question marks, uh, to start the season, you did what you've done before, maybe even ramped up a notch in the non-conference schedule as uh, sort of threw your team in the deep end and said, let's see what happens. Well, it was, uh, we've, we've had some tough non-conference uh, schedules, but this is probably as tough as it's been, uh, uh, partially by scheduling, partially because of uh, getting into the preseason in IT, but, um, you know, a very challenging road schedule, a couple really challenging home schedules, and, you know, all in all, we handled it pretty well. Um, we, we got through that where we probably needed to be. We made ourselves better, I think prepared ourselves for conference play. And that showed as A-State rolled off a bunch of wins to start some about conference play. Let's take a look at some of those early season highlights now. Way back in the preseason WNIT, Coach, you dropped a championship banner and opened up your year at home against Jackson State. Well, we, uh, like I said, we were fortunate to, to get invited to be in the preseason NIT, and, and uh, on top of that, we get a home game, and uh, which was a, a, a nice uh, uh, reward from the NIT. And uh, we get to host a Jackson State team, very talented group, and uh, got the season started off the way we wanted. Uh, you know, Jackson State, very athletic. Um, but uh, you know we, we played uh, you know, well, obviously got a lot of people involved, got our newcomers involved and uh, was all able to get off to the season on the right note. One thing we see in these highlights is uh, a lot of stuff in transition. I mean your team got out in the open floor in the opener. Well we knew uh, you know obviously having our whole uh, backcourt back, that's something we really had to uh, rely on heavily was uh, you know our defense and trying to get out and use our defense to score uh, score with our defense. So uh, and you're seeing a lot of highlights of uh, you know guard play here with Dre and Brittany Gill and, and Khadija, although she's not necessarily playing the guard. You know Fowler getting in on the mix here and uh, you know relying heavily on our guard play early on in the season once we got going. You, we talked about how tough this non-conference schedule was. One thing we might not have known going in was just how good this Mississippi State team was. Uh, and this was quite an entertaining ball game in the second WNIT game in Stark. Yeah, I mean, and we've seen, uh, we, we left there uh, feeling like they're a top 25 team, a legit top 25 team, and, and they've proven that. Uh, started off the year, I think, what it was, a 15-0 and 0 or something at one point before their first loss. And, uh, you know, and we played him well. You know, we, we had some chances to, you know, we kept it, had it down to six at a, a point or two in the, in the second half and uh, kept ourselves in. And, you know, just one of those games where, um, you know, we had no problem on offense. Uh, you know, we put up 80 plus points. Uh, you know, it was just a matter of getting stops. And they're extremely talented, extremely athletic, and uh, uh, it really became down a game of who was going to outscore who, and uh, it ended up being them outscoring us. We may see that uh, as a pattern again a little bit later in the season, more recently. And uh, again, you know, both of these games so far, uh, we've seen your team do a lot of scoring in the paint. And then uh, come home, and you knew this was going to be one of your marquee home games of the year. Chattanooga came in here fresh off a win over Tennessee. Well, uh, fresh off a win over Tennessee, and then a week later a win over a top-ranked uh, Stanford team as well. So uh, obviously a very good Chattanooga team, and uh, our players uh, really responded in this game. Uh, you know, finally after the NIT, we had about a week of practice and uh, really, uh, uh, you know, cleaning some things up, and and uh, we did a really good job. Uh, this is a team that uh, in Chattanooga we knew would be an NCAA tournament team. Uh, great guard play, a really good inside uh, post player, shot blocker. Um, you know, we re relied heavily again on our guard play. You see Amanda Lawson, one of our newcomers on the front line, uh, getting in the mix and huge win for our team, huge win for our program. Jump ahead to Sunbelt Conference play, league newcomer Appalachian State came in and, and I know uh, you left this game very impressed with Appalachian State but also impressed with the performance your team put up. Well, again, uh, you know, we said with the Mississippi State, uh, sometimes you just got to outscore people. And, uh, uh, you know, App State came in as the highest scoring team in the league at the time. And uh, we were second. And, and again, it, it, it showed both teams uh, uh, just scoring uh, a lot of points. Um, you know, it was one of those games where we kept our offense consistently throughout the game. Uh, our defense, we just needed a few little a good spurts, a good spurt in the first half to build a lead, a good spurt in the second half to extend the lead, and, and that was really it. You know, we never 
really sustain long-term good defense against them, but it was those little spurts were just good enough to, to have some separation. And one thing we've seen here just in these little highlights is uh, your team showing the ability to win in different ways. You mentioned outscoring folks and then winning, you know, sort of a slugfest a game in the 50s against Chattanooga. Yeah, and uh, you know, of course, the, the the Chattanooga one was an interesting in that you know we we they were a high scoring team as well, but we really felt like they respected our scoring ability and slowed things down, and uh, you know, so it ended up being a much lower scoring game. And uh, but that wasn't the case against App State. No, neither team was going <laughs> to slow down in that one. <laughs> Another Sunbelt newcomer. Georgia Southern came to town and uh uh, here's your team just picking up another Sunbelt Conference win. Well, really impressed, uh, you know, with the two newcomers in App State and Georgia Southern, you know, not knowing a lot about them. And, uh, um, you know, while Georgia Southern's record is not very good, I mean, when you see them in person, this is a talented bunch. That front line is really uh, big. They're versatile. Uh, you know, they're athletic. Um, you know, and, and again, a game where we really struggled, uh, you know, going in at halftime and uh, took a huge second-half effort on our part to uh, uh, to get this win. Early in conference play is a little bit of a theme for your team. Uh, I think in first four league games you outscored your opponents by 18 a game just in the second half. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, I think sometimes, you know, uh, in a lot of those cases maybe talent just eventually takes over. I think in a lot of cases, it, you know, we have a very talented bunch and, uh, you know, over a course of game, you know, over 20 minutes to one thing, over 40 minutes another thing, and I think eventually the talent just takes over to get the win. We'll step aside for a timeout. We'll come back, look at highlights of A-State's wins over Texas State and Georgia State as the Brian Boyer Show continues right after this. Can't stop, won't stop. Where the brakes at? I give them that ditty bop. Make moves or make excuses. Back on the Brian Boyer Show, coach your team, uh, started some but play undefeated, went to Appalachian State, uh, two games against them very early in the conference season, I think in the first six games. As a matter of fact, he played them twice uh, and then uh, suffered a come from behind loss to Appalachian State, came home to the Convocation Center looking to bounce back against Texas State. Well, the, uh, the loss at App State was obviously a, a tough one. You know, we were 5-0 and and going in there and then we have the uh, chance to win that and lose, but you, don't, you know, you don't have a lot of time to recover because you got to uh, quickly get back home, fly all the way back, play Texas State and was proud of the team, the way they uh, responded. Uh, this Texas State team is a talented group, uh, very good inside, very strong inside, which is where the key was and you know, they surround them with uh, two really good shooters too, one of the better shooters in the country uh, on this team as well. So it was going to take a really good defensive effort to, to beat Texas State. Jasmine Hunt popping up in these highlights quite a bit. Well, she held her own, uh, which we needed against the front line. And uh, uh, again, but you know, the whole key to this game was uh, again, a, you know, a Texas State group that's averaging in the mid to high 60s, and we hold them to 48 points. So, you know, defensively, uh, our, we did a great job. Our help defense was really good on the post players, and then, like I said, just limiting uh, the two really good shooters. Uh, we were able to keep them in, in check and not allow them to get both the inside game and outside game going. You know, we see offensive highlights and a lot of the usual suspects, but this was a game where uh, you got everybody involved. And I think, to your point there, uh, maybe what you liked best was at the end of the game, defensively, your young kids, the defensive effort was still there. Yeah, it was. And even, uh, you know, we extended the lead and, uh, you know, subbed in. You know, this was a, that stretch here of games. And, you know, we were able to get Drea some rest late. I think checked her out with about six minutes to go, seven minutes to go. And, you know, even at that point, you know, our defense continued to uh, uh, play well. So uh, good all-around effort. You know, Hannah uh, Kanan there knocking down the three has been shooting the ball extremely well. Uh, you know, which has been great to see, uh, you know, for this team. And, uh, you know, of course, you always know Dre is going to be there. Uh, Lauren Bradshaw, freshman post, continues to get better and better. Had a really good game uh, against Appalachian State and, um, you know, came in and had a good second half here against uh, Texas State. Now, they went zone for a few possessions late, and uh, I, I want to think they went zone five possessions, and we scored on four of them. So, really good effort by our team, not only 
the whole game, but uh, you know when, when they went zone of continuing to play well against that. As you mentioned earlier, the best part here, uh, there's a good part about all these games in such a short time, your team had to have a short memory. Yeah, after the loss, and you know, we, we said before in the five game win streak, uh, you know, that one of the unfortunate things about that was you never really, players didn't feel like they ever got to really enjoy the wins. It was so quick. And, uh, but, um, you know, when you took a loss like at Appalachian State, the good thing is the same thing. You're able to, uh, you have to put it behind you quickly, move on. And, uh, you know, we were able to do that against the Texas State uh, team to get the win. And then it was a matter of whether you had enough uh, in the tank to turn around two more nights later against a very good Georgia State team. Yeah, very good, very athletic, very fast Georgia State team came into the Convocation Center as, uh, as once again the theme in this Sunbelt schedule. You just keep playing. Let's look at the Georgia State highlights now. And uh, again, this is a team that came into the Convocation Center a year ago, the only league team to win here. And uh, early on, they showed they were not intimidated to be playing in Jonesboro. Well, a team that came in and won last year and had the majority of that team back, uh, you know, very talented. You know, they've been up and down this year, and, uh, you know, this was really one of the first games of their year where they had their team at full strength. They had a lot of injuries off and on throughout the year. And, uh, you know, we came out, we had a good start early, uh, you know, built an early lead right at the start, but, uh, you know, it didn't last long. And, uh, you know, Georgia State uh, responded and, and came back and took a lead. And, uh, actually took a, a significant lead in the first half and really uh, you know we were fortunate just to get into halftime with a you know with a in striking distance honestly. And, and part of the reason you were within striking distance, Khadijah Brown Haywood, they hit four for four from the three point line in the first half. Well, they, they as so many teams do, you know, they're really keen on gamble. And, uh, you know, we were able to get, uh, you know, Khadijah open a little bit, uh, you know, with screening, popping. And uh, they too went zone uh, the majority of this half. And, and was she was able to find a soft spot at the top of the key in that zone. And um, so, to, you know, to, to really, as you said, hit four threes to keep us within reach. And, uh, had a great uh, start coming out of halftime, uh, you know, came out and, and really a crucial, crucial, you know, we talked after the game is if we wouldn't have had a great start coming out of halftime, I'm not sure we, we get a victory here. But, uh, you know, we, we come out, make a push and get ourselves back within, uh, uh, within reach and then uh, kept on pushing from there. This team has uh, proven you right. One of your theories, uh, as long as we've been doing this, is that the start of the second half is uh, as key a stretch as any in a basketball game and this team has certainly tested and proven that theory. We've, uh, we've been pretty good uh, coming out of halftime and, and you see here one of the things too is different players that one of the things we've been good at is different players stepping up. Uh, you saw there uh, a couple minutes ago a huge offensive rebound put back by Amanda Lawson and you know she was really key in this game um, as uh, you know she had three offensive rebounds in a stretch there and, and uh, I think two free throws and scored on the other two and uh, were really key in uh, you know at that stretch of helping us build the lead and then extend the lead and uh, there's loss in there penetrating there and getting it to gamble so you know another one of those games where another player steps up and uh, makes huge plays for us. In fact Lawson finished with 10 points six rebounds in the second half of this game alone as you mentioned Three of those rebounds in one key stretch all on the offensive boards all led to points as Arkansas State erases a halftime deficit and comes back to knock off Georgia State 76-65. to So A-State took care of its business at home with those two wins and then your team back out on the road last weekend. Uh, you go to the Cajun Dome against the Louisiana Lafayette team that sort of came up from behind to beat you by one there last year. And uh, for a second straight year, the Raging Cajuns good against your team on their home floor. Well, a tough matchup uh, for us last year, and, and, and it turns out again this year, uh, you know, they uh, you know, really don't have a true inside game. Uh, it's just guard play, and they're super quick. And, uh, you know, their quickness has a factor both on the, in both ends of the court, uh, you know, defensively. And they really pack it in. They fly around with their quickness, uh, take a ton of charges. And uh, yeah, I think that played not only uh, a factor in the game with the charges, but also just mentally as we got really hesitant and attacking and uh, uh, kind of took us out of our game. And, uh, you know, on the offensive end or on their offensive end, again, they, they just dribble, penetrate a lot, weaves, ball screens. And, you know, we just had a real tough time guarding them, and guarding them in the uh, half court. And so then you have to go to a place where you know points are going to have to be scored in bunches uh, against Troy because you just can't hardly help stay out of a sort of a shootout against the Trojans. That's what happened. 
but it was your defense that held Tro uh, Troy without a field goal the final 248. Uh, you score the game's last six points to win it 82-76. So it was almost an interest, you know, playing those two teams back to back is uh, because they're so similar in styles, personnel similar, um, both very guard heavy, depend on their quickness, offensive style very similar. Uh, you know, the difference is is that you know uh, is that Troy wants to get in a track meet where Lafayette doesn't. So that the, the speeds are different, but the the other things are similar. And um, and I, I think that actually helped us a little bit in this game. And that um, and then obviously uh, you know the speed that they wanted to play at was more to, suiting to us. We were able to play at that speed uh, uh, comfortably. And um, but you know where at Lafayette you know we struggled taking care of the ball against the pressure. You know at Troy we did a great job of taking care of the basketball, didn't turn it over very much. Um, and then like you said, it came down to a game of the last two minutes and um, you know we made big plays uh, you know down on their end we, we contested they still got some good shots that rimmed out to, to we were able to finish them. First time since 2001 an Arkansas State team put six players in double figures in that win at Troy. So that end of the stretch of 10 Sunbelt games in 26 days for your team you're at the halfway pole as we take a look at the Sunbelt Conference standings eight and two in the league uh, solo possession of of second place. Again, uh, the story really across the league has been the schedule and how fast the games have come. So for your team to, to weather that stretch of uh, a game less than three days apart, it seems, uh, how do you feel like you're sitting here at eight and two? Well, it, uh, it, was a, it was a marathon, that's for sure, trying to get through all these games. And I think it was uh, what us and Texas State are the only two teams that played 10 during that stretch. Everybody else had a bye. And, um, but, you know, we weathered it. Uh, you know, obviously would love to have the Appalachian State thing back. Uh, one we felt like we slipped away wish we would have played better at Lafayette but uh, you know in the end sitting here eight and two and now it's a matter of uh, you know what we do with it from this point moving forward. And the second half of the conference season will include two games against uh, in-state foe UALR the first of which is this Thursday at the Convo. We saw the standings UALR the only team above your team right now and I know uh, in scouting other opponents you've seen UALR uh, on film a few times already and, and have been very impressed with Coach Foley's team. Well, they're, they're dominating uh, right now. You know, they're, they're undefeated in conference and every single win has been by 20 points or plus. Uh, you know, they're just dominating people and, um, you know, in, in every one of those games they've almost been up 20 at half. So uh, defensively, there's the same as his teams have always been, very uh, uh, physical, very athletic. And uh, the difference this year, though, is that they're, they're a lot quicker and faster than they've been in the past. They're not afraid to get out and score. And, uh, it makes them a tough match when they're able to defend like they've been doing, plus they can get out and run and transition like they're able. Uh, they shoot it better than they have in the past. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good team, very difficult team to beat. And I know two good things for your team, finally having a couple of days between games, actually rest and get a, some good practice in and, and obviously love the fact that this ball game is here in Jonesboro. Well, it's, uh, yeah, this is going to be a huge week for us, like I said, as, or as you said, just to have a couple days of rest and uh, also a couple days of just really good practice. You know, that's something that uh, we have not been able to have for quite some time to just really get in here and, and practice well. And uh, hopefully that will benefit us not only in this game against Little Rock, but as we move further into this conference. And, uh, and then having it home, uh, expect to have a great crowd. Uh, I think the fans have supported this team very well already this year. And, uh, you know, as we, we come down this home stretch, I have no doubt that we'll have great crowds. It is a Thursday doubleheader. It tips off at 5.05 at the Convo with the A-State women against UALR. Those men teams play uh, immediately following that game. Hope to see big crowds here at the Convo on Thursday night. Go ahead and check astateredwolves.com for a lot of the promotional offers available on the doubleheader on Thursday. Coach, thanks for the visit. Look forward to seeing your clubs out there against the Trojans. All right, thanks. Until the next edition of the Brian Boyer Show, for the head coach, I'm Brad Bobo. So long, everyone.